Today on another haunting episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. What started as an affair turned into a lost love that would span its reach far beyond this lifetime. As one woman reconnects with her lover long after his untimely death, did he have a message for her from the other side? Or did he return to be her transparent companion for the rest of her earthly days? That story and much more today on Real Ghost Stories Online. Stories online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855 853 4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. That it is. 855 853 4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online. To share your real ghost stories with us, we'd absolutely love to hear them. Of course, you can write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. And if you like the show, help keep us on the air, become an extra podcast person. Sign up for that at uh, ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash stories. $5 a month gets you access to all the bonus episodes, advanced episodes, and so much more. And that's what help, uh, keeps the program on the air. You get all that stuff uh, and... Uh, support the show at the same time. Tony and Todd with you on today's episode of the program. What's going on? I always have to laugh when we have conversations before the podcast because it could be a number of things that we talk about. Mm-hmm. But again, it was it was me whining about getting older in my leg and you know, I sounded like the creepy old man down the street and then you're talking about bales of hay and manure and the <laughs> garden you're going to plant and all that kind of stuff. And I'm thinking, wow, if you took us back, say, 20 years from here, maybe even more than that, just a totally different conversation that would be. Could you imagine, like, like if you said, yeah, in uh, 20 years, they're going to be having a conversation. I'm going to be doing this and you're going to be doing that. And be like, no way in hell. <laughs> nope. Not nope. in the least bit. I no. can't even imagine you're the same kid that was riding the bike and just to work and all that kind of stuff. It's just crazy. Oh, it's funny. It's it is it is completely crazy. Well, I'm in a new studio here today. Uh, this is uh, uh, the new one that we got built. It's 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 functional, but it's not uh, fully decked out with everything yet. But it is up in working order. I've lost track of how many studios I've built now, um, from house to house. Um, I think I counted like six or seven the other wow. day. Wow. So what do you got left to uh, to do? Um, the studio, the, the consoles are all up. The seats are up. Um, it's just really just kind of furnishing it, whatever I'm going to do on the walls. I have a lot of it, I like kind of the backdrop up, but I still have a lot of stuff to transfer uh, from the old office yet. So gotcha. I'm going to work on that over the next week or two. It, it's, it's the not fun part now where it's like just dragging furniture across the yard. So. <laughs> it'll be really exciting and there's a lot of mud over there right now too so it's um yeah it's kind of a mess but looky here margaret he's got his bales of hay out there but he's pulling along a barca lounger what's that all about <laughs> what is he doing with that oh it, it, that looks it looks uh, what is that stain yeah it's um it's <laughs> look at that city boy over there trying to farm <laughs> I, I get that look from all the farmers in the area. <laughs> they, they probably love you, though, because secretly they talk about you behind your back, but mm-hmm. they actually like you, you know? I, they're, they're nice. They're friendly to me, but I think they look at, like, what I'm, like, what is he doing? Like, because I'm just, like, doing whatever, like, just completely randomness and, you know, things work, they don't work. I don't know. I kind of figured out as I go. And it was like, you should have asked me about that. Like, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't, I don't he's know. Put, he's put in a cement pond. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to try and raise trout in the backyard. It's not a pool. It's a trout farm. Oh, that's what it is. Oh, God. Yeah, there you go. Anything is possible. Uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number here at uh, Real Ghost Stories online to share your real ghost stories with us. Let's go over to our first uh, letter of the day. It says, uh, this one is very emotional for me. And it reveals a lot about my personal life. Please be kind because this is still fresh and raw for me, but it and it does not portray me in a good light at all. Background, about six years ago, my husband and I were not in a good place and I had an affair. I'm not proud of it, of the hurt it caused, but it was a very raw time in my life that forever shaped me. My husband knows everything and we have since reconciled and rekindled our relationship. I was in love with the man I had an affair with. He was terminally diagnosed with cancer two years into what was going on between us. He died 14 months after that. 
He had his own family. I had mine, respected the need for him to die with his family, and I knew I needed to work on my own. We saw each other as often as we could, and we stayed connected here and there by phone. But as he got worse, I stopped hearing from him altogether. I never had closure. We never said goodbye, which is how we both wanted it to end. When he did pass away, I went into a state of grief I could not even describe. I lost myself for a few years after that. Unbelievably, my saint of a husband picked up my broken pieces, held me together while I grieved. The man who died visited me and gave me countless signs he was still around. It was strong at first, mostly sweet dreams, but also things like messing with my life, like the prankster that he was. They were obvious and strong and always made me smile. I knew he would do this because we both believed in the otherworldly and talked about it a lot. We were both sensitive and shared a lot of experiences. A few years after he died, he finally said goodbye to me. It was early in the morning. The sun was rising and I was dreaming and lying on my left side. I slept on the left side of my bed and in my dream, he kissed me. He was tender, romantic, and so very real. It shocked me awake and I opened my eyes. As my eyes came into focus, there he was on his knees next to my bed kissing me. The moment I realized what I was experiencing, he started vanishing into nothing. I cried and cried when he vanished, and yet I felt closure. I knew he was moving on, and subsequently I moved on too. I still feel him from time to time. I even see his silhouette walking past door frames or around corners once in a while, but it's not strong or often like it was in the beginning, right after he passed. He's in peace now, and so am I. Because of the nature of this ghost story, I do not share this experience with many people in my life. I've experienced many things in my lifetime, but nothing I've had to keep quiet, such as this one. An anonymous podcast seemed like the perfect way to share. I've been a fan for a few years. You may have the intent of spooky ghost stories, but what you really do is help us connect with the dimension beyond this one. It helps us heal, it gives us peace, and it validates our experiences. Love you. All right. Thoughts on that story? What a very personal story. Uh, you walk away from it. And number one, this individual is right. I mean, there's no judgment here, obviously. This mm -hmm. is a safe place to talk about stuff. But what it does do for me is it just makes me realize more and more and more that what we think is important in real life or what we think is real life, mm -hmm. when that's over and we've gone on or we've passed on or whatever happens to us when we leave, there's there's either a forgiveness or an understanding or something that kind of makes everything right again or better. I'm not really sure. So this story just kind of reinforced that for me. It's actually a very sweet and touching story. It is. It really is a, a sweet and touching story. I do have to say, though, if I was a husband and and the boyfriend ghost is still hanging around, you know, I I, I understand kind of having you know making peace with it. Be like, come on, dude, like, can, let let's let's you you stop haunting us. This let's let's stop this now. You know, <laughs> <laughs> little jealousy. I, 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 I think I think there would be. I think I would be a little jealous of the ghost if he's still hanging out. Like, I get it. You had this this thing and it was real for you too. Cool, but that's done. Now we're back. Now stop stop hiding around corners and shit. I think this dude starts hanging up like garlic and stuff all over. Oh my the god, place yeah, like crucifixes and stuff. <laughs> she gets home from work one day and there's this is like fucking sage everywhere. We're doing a sage garden in every room of the house. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and it's not to make fun of the story at all, but just, you know, put a little light on the situation as I always do. So if you listen to the show for any time, you had to expect I was going to say something. But um, <laughs> I'm not going to let everything just go. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think I would be a little jealous of the ghost, but I'm glad everything, you know, worked out uh, in the end. And, you know, you all kind of found a way to, to learn and grow from that. Uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number here at Real Ghost Stories Online. Let's go to a caller. Hi. Hey, um, this is Steelbo from South Carolina again. I get, um, I hope I'm not spamming your phone because I've tried it a few times and I'm not sure it went through. I'm honestly not sure what all happened. And plus, I honestly got kind of nervous and got a little bit of stage fright. So I had to try talking this through a few times. But I really want to hear what y'all think of this story that I've got. Um, so I should... I'm going to try to be as concise as possible, but like, I feel like I need to get a, a lot of context 
So my family has always kind of experienced a lot of weird things, but my parents are really, uh, they're Christian and they believe in like angels and demons and spirits, but we don't necessarily believe in ghosts. So my parents would like acknowledge when weird things would happen, but they didn't want, they never really want to like talk about it extensively. They're just kind of like, oh yeah, that weird thing happened. Let's talk about it maybe five minutes and then move on with our lives. That's their kind of attitude about it. Um, but I was always one who wanted to like really, I don't know, investigate things. Um, so I think that's part of the reason why I feel like I got the most attention from whatever it was that would, you know, freak us out or be, be weird. And around when I was 12 or 13, I it was just a really intense time for my family. Like there was just a lot of family drama. My little been born. Uh, grandparents were in and out of hospitals. It was a really like really hard time for all of us. So I don't think that was the coincidental that that's when a lot of weird, unexplainable things kept happening, mostly just weird noises. But it, it was a lot that would happen, you know, in a short span of time. And I, I knew I wasn't the only one hearing it because my mom said she heard some stuff too. Uh, but that's another story for another time. But uh, see, around this time, I would hear these footsteps walking into my bedroom and this was during the daytime, so like I could see it happening and no one was walking in, but I could hear the footsteps walking in and the carpet in my bedroom, the people who put it down didn't do a very good job. So there are certain places where the carpet kind of buckles and it just looks like a big wrinkle across the floor. It's kind of funny, but um, steps, I would see those wrinkles sink down like someone was stepping on it and those footsteps would always walk in go to the foot of my bed and stop. I never heard them leave. And that happened like two or three times. I can't remember how many times. But in hindsight, you know, that's really creepy. But at the time, I it, weird things were just became so commonplace that I didn't really think too much about it. It was like, oh, well, that's weird. Okay, moving on with my homework or whatever. So that would happen. Uh, eventually, our lives got a little bit better. And the drama kind of settled down. And all the paranormal unexplainable things just kind of fizzled out and it, it was just eh, yeah so uh fast forward to 2017 and i had become a christian um and yeah like i i kind of forgot about a lot of the weird stuff that would happen at that point well suddenly out of the blue uh one night i just woke up in a panic and I guess I'd fallen asleep with the lamp on because the lamp was on when I woke up and I could see in my room and I could see in the doorway there was this black shadow silhouette figure standing there perfectly still. I can't remember exactly its shape. Um, it, it's, kind of, it's kind of vague, like from a dream. I, I think I might remember some details, but it's, it's, it's also very vague. So... All I really can say I remember is that it was like a cloaked figure, looked like he was in a robe or something, and it was hunched over and it was standing still staring at me from the doorway. And I'm thinking, oh my word, this thing's going to attack me. Like, I need to get up and I need to fight this thing. So I tried to get up, but then that's when I realized, wait, hold on, this is really bizarre because my body's facing the wall. And I am looking at this thing, like if my body's facing the wall, that I can't be staring at this thing in the doorway. So basically, it's like I, I was having a like out of body experience because suddenly once I realized that my uh, line of vision kind of panned around the room, like I rolled over, rolled over to my opposite, opposite side back into my body. And once I did that, I realized I can't move at all. Like, I, I can't move anything except my left hand. My left hand's the only thing that wants to move. And it, my, le my left arm, I should say, was uh, draped across the, um, in between the wall and the mattress. 
So I could just barely move it, but it was really limp and it just kind of, it was almost like it was asleep or something like that. And I just kind of barely moved it up. And I remember trying to pry my head off the pillow. It, it weighed like a freaking bowling ball. It was intense. It was insane. And I'm just thinking, oh my word, my back's turned to this thing. It could come up and attack me any moment. I have to like get up and attack this thing. So I'm frantically trying to move, trying to get up. All of a sudden, I just, I shot up in bed. I can move. I look around. Nothing's there. And then I thought clearly, and then I thought, I just need to pray, praying this entire time. So um, I just prayed, you know, the blood of Jesus rained down on the situation. Please protect me from any demons. And I guess I fell asleep after that because uh, I don't remember anything else after that point. But it's funny because I, I woke up the next morning at 5 a.m. to go to work. I didn't, uh, I, I, I didn't, I barely remembered it. Like it was like a, it was like a dream, like a nightmare. Like I kind of remembered it, but I, I just brushed it off and went about my day. Well, the, the next uh, afternoon, I, I get back home from my, from my shift at work, and my mom comes up to me and she goes, "Steel, well, I need to tell you something when your siblings aren't around." And I was like, "Oh no, what am I, what am I in trouble for now?" Um, but she tells me that she, in the middle of the day, went to read a book with my uh, brother and sister. They were like four and six at the time. And they sat on the couch, and then both my siblings were like, there's someone walking in the hallway. And my mom was like, I don't hear anything. I don't know what you're talking about. There's no one in the hallway. But they were so insistent. So finally, she gets up. They all get up. They go look down the hallway. No one's there. They go and sit back down. And as soon as she opens the book again, the dog gets up and starts barking at the hallway. So clearly there was something there. And as soon as she tells me that story, I remember what happened to me the night before. So my theory is, is that this thing had been haunting me before I was a Christian and it would come into my room and stuff like that. And who knows what it was doing, I guess, just staring at me. Um, but it wasn't until I became a Christian that it became really angry with me because then it didn't have as much power over me. And it did something to me, though, because I couldn't think clearly or move. But God protected me and it couldn't come in my room. Uh, and then I guess what my siblings heard, the name thing leaving. So I want to know what your thoughts on this is. So, yeah, thank you again for everything that y'all do. I love the environment on this podcast. I love how open minded y'all are. I really want to hear what y'all think about this. Uh, yeah, y'all have a blessed day now. All right. Thanks for uh, calling in and sharing that. Thoughts on that? Interesting uh, little story there. Um, you know, a lot of things come to mind. Um, I think they mentioned an out-of-body experience that could be going on. It could be sleep paralysis, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, maybe they were seeing something with their third eye. You know, they said they were facing the wall, but they were seeing out the door, all that kind of stuff. I think it's really interesting that they had stuff going on for a while, and then it kind of went away. And then this happened after they became Christian. So, mm -hmm. you know, what it is, <clears throat> there's more questions than answers at this point. But, uh, you know, there are certain things that could have been going on there. It does sound like something was trying to communicate at that point. Yeah, no, it, it really does. Thank you for sharing that uh, that experience with us. 855-853-4802 uh, is our phone number. Let's go to a letter. It says, hi, guys. I'm from Boulder Junction, about an hour north of Wausau, Wisconsin. And I've not really spoken to anyone about this except my fiance and my little brother. But I'm feeling like I must tell you guys my story. My sophomore year in high school, my family moved into this new house. It's a very nice house, but uh, three sizes, too big, not quite finished, and the owners didn't tell us the full story until the end of our time there. I stayed up on the top floor from the first day. I was uneasy up there. I wouldn't be on the floor alone, slept with all the lights on. The presence was constantly strong in my room. And I believe that might have been because I had a door in my room that led into an unfinished room. I kept heavy boxes in front of the door almost at all times. Whenever I sat in the living room alone, I would feel someone stroke my hair and softly touch my face. I immediately searched for any source that could have explained it, but 
All the vents were too far away and weren't on. I began searching for other answers, which is the point where I started trying to understand more about the paranormal and figuring out what was going on in a way to help him and hopefully get him out of our house. But halfway through our stay there, my parents went out to lunch with the landlords to talk about the many things that were wrong with the house. We found out that their son, Mike, had been building the house with his father before we found out he had cancer. Very soon after, passed away. My parents invited them over to the house, and his mother refused to even step foot on the property, which seemed odd to my parents, so they refrained from telling me until I practically forced it out of them the night we moved. We'll get to what happened that night soon. One night I couldn't fall asleep and I could feel him touching my arm softly and the cold air was surrounding me. And this is midsummer. My room, having not been finished, had no heating and cooling capabilities and I was curled up in my blanket so I should have been very warm. And my iPad charging at 100% right next to me. I was getting more uncomfortable with his presence in my room and how I couldn't ever be alone. So I sat up abruptly and said, I don't mind that you're here, but if you're going to stay, you need to stay over there in that area of the room. And if you won't, I need you to leave. I pointed, showing where he could stay immediately. I felt the mood in the room quickly change to anger and I felt a sharp pain on my left leg. I moved my blanket quickly and looked down at my leg and there was a red handprint on my leg like someone hit me, much bigger than my hand looked over at my iPad, which had lit up and went from charging 100% to a 60% and still charging. I began crying and I was frightened, the anger lingering in my room, and I felt him watching me at some point in the night. Between the shaking and crying, I fell asleep. After that, I began getting irritable, much more, especially when I was in the living room. I tried not to go into my room even more than possible. I started to sleep in the spare room downstairs. The energy got worse and I'd get this unbelievable rage over absolutely nothing. I honestly feel awful about how angry I would get and the awful things I would say because I couldn't control it. It sounds stupid, but I couldn't. My parents decided that we were going to move not too soon after and I just started crying and couldn't imagine leaving. Which is the weirdest thing because looking back now, I needed to leave. It was affecting me badly. But he would go from being violent just softly touching my hair while I sat and watched TV. It was like I was trapped in my own head. So a few weeks later, it was moving day. Most of the boxes were in the new house. They were just picking up the cats. My parents and brother were sitting in the car, and I walked into the house, and after the door shut, I walked down the hallway a few steps, and I could feel his presence in the hallway in front of me. And I heard a male voice directly in front of my face that said, Hello. I bolted to the cat got out of that house as fast as I could. I was just shaking for a long time and refused to speak until the next day because I knew if I said anything, I would just be told that it wasn't real, that it was all my imagination. Even now, whenever I pass the house, I get an urge to go back. Sorry for how long this was. It's a major story for me. I'll tell another one someday. Love your show. Plan to become an EPP once I get my next paycheck. Thank you for reading thoughts on all of that um crazy and again when you experience something like that you think you're crazy you're afraid of sharing it because you think other people are going to say you're crazy mm -hmm. what i do find interesting is that when the boundary was put up and it was said you know you can be over there but if you come this way you're going to have to go See, i think like it was trying to communicate i think it wanted to communicate the energy knew that they were there and that they wanted to communicate i think that one of the mistakes people make in dealing with paranormal stuff is that if it's not residual, if it is intelligent, it's probably trying to communicate with you. It's yeah. pro it probably realizes you're there and it realizes that, you know, it's there. I mean, it's just like standing in an in a empty room with another person. At some point, there's going to be conversation. And that's kind of what's going on there. If you set boundaries and you have that conversation, sometimes that stuff just kind of goes away. I think sometimes the way that the communication happens is in a way that we can't really communicate with the living. And that being said, it's it's where you're feeling the emotions of the other 
person or the ghost. I mean, if you're empathic, you can kind of. But I think there's times where it, it, the, the spirit is communicating with you by letting you feel them for a moment. So when they were overcome with this this rage or this anger or this sadness that they otherwise was very uncharacteristic of them, I, I think at times that's that sort of thing. It, it's something, it's not giving you words, but you are feeling what it was feeling can be very confusing without the context, but I think that's that's some of the ways that they communicate with us. Absolutely, and I think you got to have an open mind in those situations and realize that the way you and I communicate today was is it not the way that people had communicated twenty years ago? Even I mean, mm-hmm. there was no texting and stuff like that. Sure, um, you know. So I think that in that realm, communication is probably different. If you took a step back and thought about that, it might make the situation a little bit more comfortable. But listen, when you're dealing with that kind of stuff, the last thing you're thinking about, you're thinking about your safety. You're not thinking about, you know, having a conversation with with whatever's there. Mm-hmm. No, I completely agree. So I um, I found this website today because I was looking to uh, to watch a, a Louis Thoreau documentary that I couldn't find on American television. And I don't know, I, I you know, years ago when you had to. Um, Uh, If you wanted to watch something that you otherwise couldn't get your hands on, like a foreign documentary or something, or if it was not out yet or whatnot, you would go to like, there was like bit torn at sites and things like that. It was like the days of Napster and things. And I know that that stuff still exists to a certain extent, but there was like, everybody was doing it at one time. Uh, So I've, I've not been involved in that sort of stuff forever, but there's like these websites now that basically stream these basically archive of every movie in the world and you don't need to have Netflix or anything. It's just all there. Um, so I was kind of curious um, uh, and I I was like, okay, there's I know there's a handful of Amityville movies and there's some real uh, crazy, uh, I don't even say one-offs, they're like 10-offs at this point uh, of it, but oh my god, I had no idea there were so many low-budget Amityville movies that have been made. Well, the first low budget was Amityville 3D. That uh-huh. one took it right out and made it into something, and then that just kind of exploded the whole thing. But how many? How many did you come across? Uh, how many are in a row here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, sixteen, about twenty-four. Wow, you, I didn't know that. You want to hear their titles? Yes. Okay, so. Uh, the first one here, this is from 2020, and a lot of these have been made like in the last two or three years. Uh, you have Amityville Island, uh, where it, the the uh, cover of it looks like there's a shark that's possessed uh, in okay. it. Uh, then you have Amityville Dollhouse from 96, uh, Amityville Exorcism from 2017, Amityville Vampire from, from 2021, Amityville po- Poltergeist 2020, Amityville Cult 2021, Amityville Cop 2021, Amityville Uprising 2022, Amityville 3D 83, The Amityville Murders 18, The Amityville Curse 90, The Amityville Horror 79, the original, Amityville The Awakening from 2017. That was a, a larger budget one. Uh, the Amityville Horror, the remake in 05. The Amityville Harvest in 2020. The Amityville Haunting in 2011. Amityville Playhouse 2015. The Amityville Terror 2016. The Amityville Moon 2021. Amityville 2 Possession 82. Amityville The Evil Escapes 89. Uh, Amityville A New Generation 93. Witches of Amityville 2020. Amityville Mount Misery Road 2018, Amityville The Hood <laughs> 2021, and Amityville It's About Time 1992. I got to say of all these, one of the most intriguing ones I have to say is probably Amityville The Hood. <laughs> <laughs> There's break dancing out front and, uh, and a lot of rapping and stuff. I, it's it. just like, oh, here's, here we go. Well, I think people just like make movies on their like iPhones now because like I mean the camera the thing is the camera works not bad but this is just like it's like community theater actors I think in a lot of these it's not hard to get a movie made anymore I guess how interested are you in seeing some of those now because you know Amityville is like where everything started for me so like 
I would be interested in seeing some of those. I am, and and it's more so. I mean, not that they're based, that they're like really anything to do with the storyline. But I, I watched a few minutes of one of them, but right before we got on the air, and the acting was so bad, it was like I got to just watch more of this because this is almost funny as to how bad it is. But I'm curious how they make it scary at the same time. Yeah, how deep can the Amityville story go? I remember 3D was I thought. Uh, really out there. Um, Aunt Becky from Full House was in that one. <laughs> she um, was. She, Lori Laughlin. Yeah, she was. Lori Laughlin's in that one. And um, and it's 3D, which is, mm-hmm. is kind of crazy, too. So I just thought that one was like, oh, the bad acting couldn't get any worse. Yeah. But now we're talking about all these from 2020, 2018, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, there's so many. There's just tons and tons of them. Uh, it's not an advertisement for that website, but uh, Flixer.tv, I think, is the, the website that I was looking on. I don't know. I, I was just kind of amazed that wow. it's just there. Like, every movie is there. I'm like, okay, this is... Wow, neat. Can't be legal, but it, but <laughs> but but it's like, but it's not like used to be like sites like that. You'd click on it, there would be like five hundred pop ups and this and that. Like this is, looks like it, it runs like a legitimate site. That's uh, it's like okay. Well, I guess this is how the world works today. Yeah, till tomorrow when till you're taking your hay, hay bales out and the FBI rolls in the yard. <laughs> exactly. you know, they confiscate the pool. I uh, I had the craziest dream last night. So you know we we, we have um, you know well like we have our our imitation uh, Robert Stack and imitation Casey Kasem that we play on the show sometimes. Right. I I had a dream that I had made one of Tom Brokaw, and. <laughs> And this is the shit I dream about. This is what I was dreaming about when the alarm went off this morning to take Harper to the bus. Um, and I'm dreaming. I'm like, oh, this is really cool. It sounds great. And then I get a call and it's Tom Brokaw and he's angry. <laughs> <laughs> he's very angry. It's like, you can't use the uh, voice of Tom Brokaw. And I'm, I'm like, oh, like, like, well, it, it's, it's like a sat. And I'm trying to explain it to him. Like, it's a satire. Like, remember, like, back in the 90s, uh, you know, when you were on NBC Nightly News, there'd be all those morning shows that would use, like, fake Tom Brokaw's. Like, it's the same sort of thing. And he's, he was arguing with me, and I was arguing with Tom Brokaw in my dream about using the fake Tom Brokaw. <laughs> this is what scares me, too, is because that is exactly something I would dream. And it would be somebody that I would dream about. You know, yeah. that's why that's why I look at you and I'm like. Either you need to look at me and realize this is where you will be in like 10 or 20 years, or I need to look at you and go, holy shit, you know? You've always been like the older brother to me, though. I mean, it's always we've always had the weird similarities on shit. You're, but, you're screwed, my friend. Yeah. You're screwed. Oh, yeah. Good times. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the shit I was dreaming about. All right. That's going to wrap up today's episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. If you like the show, keep us on the air. Become an extra podcast person. Sign up at ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Get all the bonus episodes, advanced episodes, and more. And they're all commercial free. Ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Until next time, for Todd, I'm Tony. Thanks for listening to Real Ghost Stories Online.